Hey, Sun Devil fans, Brad Denny with 3TV, CBS5, and the Speak of the Devils podcast here. And welcome back to another episode of the Speak of the Devils sit-down series, where I bring you in-depth one-on-one conversations with key players, coaches, and other figures within Sun Devil Athletics. It's increasingly rare these days in the transfer portal era for a player to stay true to his school, put in the hard work, and trust the process. But that's exactly what Arizona State goaltender Gibson Homer did. He didn't see any action his freshman year, but put in the hard work and was named the team's practice hero that season. And when he finally got his chance last year, he excelled, posting some of the very best goaltending numbers in the entire nation. Now the Sun Devils starter, he's bringing that same work ethic to the crease as ASU begins its first season in the daunting NCHC conference. On this episode, Gibson and I discuss the value of hard work, how it felt to thrive when he finally got his opportunity, the mental side of goaltending, what the Devils can say to the rest of the college hockey world this season, and so much more. So let's get to it. Here's my conversation with Gibson Homer. All right, so you've undoubtedly made thousands of saves over your lifetime. What save is like your all-time favorite robbery? Oh, uh, I don't know if I have one that comes to mind right away. Um, I don't know, the next one. I feel like that's a good answer. That, that, that feels like a very Greg Powers answer, so I, I like it. I like it. Uh, so obviously, this past weekend, you guys uh, faced one of the true blue bloods in the sport in Michigan, and uh, you know, despite what the record book might say, I say you guys definitely earned, earned a split there. Uh, what did you learn about this year's Sun Devil team? You know, facing up uh, against the, the Wolverines. Yeah, honestly, I think it gives our team a lot of confidence going into the season. I mean, you know, going into the NCHC, it's a we got a tough schedule. You know, probably the toughest schedule this, you know, the ASU hockey has ever faced. So just kind of going against, you know, like you said, a blue red, blue blood like Michigan and kind of just showing them that we can compete with them. And, you know, obviously we did that last year too, but this early in the season, you know, having that confidence that we can compete with anyone. And, uh, you know, like you said, the scoreboard might not have ended up with a split, but I mean, the morale is high in the locker room for sure. Does that kind of maybe stick in the craw a little bit, just knowing like officially it's a 3-3 draw, even though you guys uh, won it in the shootout? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I think just the way that the game ended up, especially, I mean, it's hard not to be a little bit excited, you know, scoring two goals in the final minute. And then, you know, the shootout win was it's always, <laughs> always exciting. So it feels like a win. So of course, you know, shootouts are you know really exciting part. And you know, I, I've played goalie for you know 25, 30 years myself. What what's your mentality though when you, you're lining up? You know, you're in, you're in the crease, you got the shooter, and, and uh, you're about ready to come at you. What's going? What are the thoughts going through your mind in, in those moments? Uh, well, I mean, it's uh, in a game versus Michigan. You know, knowing that the outcome doesn't you know really matter that much. It's just kind of going out there and having fun. You know, giving the fans something to cheer on, some some uh, some show. So that I mean, I think that's kind of the big thing with goaltending in general is just like not thinking too much, not worrying about you know every everything that's going on. You just got to play free and just gotta you know give the fans a show sometimes. So of course, you know that was the second series of the year, and uh, you got the got the split against uh, Air Force. You know, you and, and Net for the, the opener, and got the the big win there. What was it like? Just kind of you know start off the the season in, in the fashion that you guys did. Yeah, it was exciting. It kind of especially uh, you know one of the new guys, Shimek from uh, transfer from Providence. You know, he had an unbelievable game. I think he had three goals, maybe I think three of them. So you know, just having the, the new guys step up as well, as along with you know, the veteran guys on our team, you know, also play the way that they know how to play and have, you know, have showed that they can play, you know, the past handful of years at ASU. Um, it was good to kind of have the whole, uh, you know, squad that we have now meshed together in that, in that way. And with those new guys and, you know, the returning core, you yourself amongst them, you know, after a couple series, you know, what are some of the things that really kind of jump out to you about this year's squad, you know, when you perhaps compare to, you know, the, the traits and the tendencies of last year's Sun Devil team. Yeah. I mean, you just look at our team now, you know, we've had a lot of success in the, you know, the starting four games, but I mean, there's a lot of guys that still are, you know, injured right now. You know, we have three, you know, elite forwards out right now that are going to be coming back, you know, pretty soon. So, 
just kind of it just kind of shows how much depth that this team has that maybe past Sun Devil teams you know didn't have the luxury to have but you know we don't have that this year so we're we're fortunate to have just every single player on our roster be able to come in and make a difference for a program so of course coming into this year is a little bit different for you you know you're the guy now being chased as you know, the the starter for uh, the Sun Devils in net and you know last year you know of course were the guy that you know kind of chasing that starting job how how do you see like kind of that, that mentality you know shifted for, over the course of a year yeah i mean i think a, a big thing that i've learned over the past you know time at ASU and even before then is you know you can't really have any mindset of like or you can't like shift your mindset from one of like chasing and then you know like you said the one being chased you know it, it all kind of has to be even level the whole time and that's really where you have success i mean going this year like you said i mean right now it seems like powers you know trust me with the net and i've you know the team trusts me too but honestly just doing everything that i can in practice you know just as i did last year when tj was that guy is uh kind of the mindset that i want to take into this year so i want to go back to kind of the, the start of your hockey journey and what was some of the things that got you into the sport of hockey and perhaps most importantly uh what got you uh, got you between the pipes yeah uh my dad actually he was a he played at ferris state he wasn't a goalie so he's originally Canadian. So obviously, you know, the Canadian bloodline <laughs> kind of got me in the game. And uh, yeah, ever since I was a kid, he's uh, been putting me in skates. And uh, it just happened to be that I wanted to be a goalie. I liked, you know, jumping around. I liked the, all the attention that the, came with the position a little bit as a kid. And uh, I don't know, my dad, he tried to stop me a little bit, but, you know, it was just meant to be. So just worked out that way you, you ever uh, face him and you know he, he's taking shots on you if you were to you know give him a scouting report you know how was it like you know facing your dad as a goalie uh growing up actually a good amount he was my coach for a little bit growing up so he would uh he never he never went easy on me that's for sure and uh <laughs> i mean it seemed to work out so i'm happy so one of the the things that really is uh, you know earned a lot of praise for you from a lot of folks is just your the the work ethic that's really obviously manifested in you taking the the starting job here at ASU. What was the kind of the origin of that work ethic? Is that something that kind of came, came naturally, or is that something that you kind of you know had to work towards to get the work ethic? Uh, yeah, I think that also kind of give credit to both of my parents. I mean, my dad worked his way to play Division One, and then he ended up playing a little bit in the minors and. Uh, my mom, you know, she played volleyball in college at Ferris State as well. So just kind of that competitiveness and, you know, you know, effort that you talked about was just always a big value in my family. And, uh, you know, it seemed to rub off on me and my sister as well because she, uh, she's now currently on the Villanova volleyball team. So thanks. So, and then, uh, of course, you had time early on or earlier in uh, with the USA uh, Hockey National Team Development Program. Uh, what was kind of the impact on, on the kind of the trajectory in the course of your career, you know, being able to, to play in, in the, that, that prestigious program? Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. I mean, going up against the, you know, best players of your birth year just every day in practice. I mean, it, you know, it's, uh, it's the best junior place for a reason. I mean, they have so much success, so much, you know, elite coaching and just like being able to be a part of that was it was special and I'm grateful for the opportunity and uh, yeah, it's uh, shaped me in the way that I am today. So kind of, you know, between that program and youth hockey, and then I played a little bit for the Chicago Steel. I mean, each one of those facilities and programs kind of shaped me in their own way. And I mean, I'm just appreciative of all of it. I'm just glad to, I, I, see myself, see where I am now, and I just have to be grateful for uh, all the places that helped me get there, good good times and bad. What did it mean for you just, you know, to be able to kind of don the red, white, and blue and kind of rep your country? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I mean, that opportunity doesn't come often for a lot of people, so, uh, you know, there was a lot of pride in that. There was a lot of uh, responsibility in, in that as well, so... Yeah, it was it was just really fun. I feel like that's just the best way to put it. 
And of course, you mentioned the US, USHL experience that you had. Is there? How did that kind of impact your game and, and kind of the key lessons that you took away from that experience? Yeah, I mean, that team was it was really good to be honest. I played with uh, Adam Fantilli, Jackson Blake, and just a lot of other you know elite hockey players. And uh, I mean, that team has had so much success in the USHL for a reason. I mean, you know, they uh, they work, they uh, they play hard, and you know, they have just uh, such a passion for you know developing their players to the next level. So just the coaching that I had there and uh, just ability and like kind of trust that they had in me, you know, it uh, it made me you know, get to the, where I am now. So grateful. You, you mentioned it, you know, in your younger days that you really like kind of the attention that came along with being, you being the goalie, you know, now that, you know, you have years under your belt uh, in the crease, what are some of the, the favorite aspects of just playing the position? You know, obviously one that is, you know, so critical and, you know, the, de- the team depends on so much. Uh, I, I think I do like that responsibility a little bit. I mean, have just, you know, I kind of go into the mindset of, you know, every game, every shot that I take, I feel like there's always, you know, something that I could do to, you know, get it the next time, so to speak, you know, every goal that I let in is, uh, it's a learning opportunity to, you know, develop my game further. And, uh, I don't really, I don't like making excuses of, you know, goals that I let in and stuff. So, um, yes. Can you repeat the question? (laughs) Oh yeah, that, that was like, you know, just kind of the favorite aspects of just you know playing goalie. Oh yeah, yeah. So, sorry, went all <laughs> tangent there. Um, yeah, I I, I like that responsibility. I like um, you know, not you know never having excuses and never kind of like relying on other people, so to speak. You know, it's good to trust your teammates and you know trust that they do their job. But at the end of the day, if I'm you know, completely on my game, we can win a game one zero. And, you know, I, I, I think that's, uh, that's very unique to my position. You mentioned that, you know, you try to learn some stuff from, you know, every goal that you, you let in. So how do you, but at the same point, you know, how do you kind of navigate the, the fine line of, you know, trying to you know, take away some lessons, you know, from giving up a goal to, you know, maybe not letting it linger and impact yeah. the performance going forward? Yeah, no, that's a, it's a good question. Um, you know, obviously it's important not to dwell as well, but uh, I think there there's just kind of a balance there. You just kind of got to find that balance between, you know, you know, acknowledging, you, you know, where you went wrong and what you can do better. And, you know, not, like I said, not dwelling and not, you know, making it bigger than it is and just kind of still having that, confidence in yourself and trust in your game that you know you can give up a goal but you can have the confidence to know that you'll implement the maybe the lessons you learned into that next shot so it kind of there definitely is a fine line there though and that's something that you know it's not easy to navigate at times so before arizona state was even on your radar as a possible destination uh, for you what was kind of your view of Sun Devil Hockey? Was it even kind of something that you were aware of? Just kind of this pro, this relatively new program out in the desert that, you know, kind of building its way up? Yeah, to be honest, not, it wasn't completely on my radar, no. I mean, I grew up in Michigan, so, I mean, I grew up, you know, the big hockey schools were, you know, Michigan, Michigan State, and then obviously all, like, the blue blood schools, such as, you know, all the, Boston teams and North Dakota and all that. So, I mean, I wasn't that familiar, but as soon as I came on the visit here, I fell in love. And then, yeah, Powers was, you know, I was blessed enough to have him, you know, take a take a chance at me. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So you, you mentioned falling in love on, on your visit. You know, once you got to see the program up close and, and see what they what Powers is building, what ultimately were the, the key factors that made you want to become a Sun Devil? I think I think the biggest one was kind of the trust that Powers had in me. I think that's something that you know a lot of you know a lot of coaches might not have in their players. You know, they just you know go after you know the big guns or whatever, and then if it doesn't 
maybe if it doesn't pan out, it doesn't pan out. But I feel like Powers to me, you know, he uh, he really had that faith in me. He like saw something in me that, you know, maybe other coaches didn't. So having that confidence in your coach and then, you know, mix with all the other things. Like freshman year, I worked with Eddie Lack all year. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, you know, obviously a long time NHL goalie. So just having the opportunity to, you know, develop my game and, you know, that's what this school does. It just, just feeds you opportunity to get better. And then, you know, it's on you kind of, if you don't take it from there. So even going back to the program when they were still at the ACHA level, uh, some, some former players told me that, the, you know, they'd pass up some scholarships to play at Arizona state just because the, the quality of life and just everything that being a Sun Devil offered. So obviously you mentioned as a Michigan guy, how's life in the desert? How, how are you liking it being out here and a little bit something different? It is so fun. Yeah, it is, it is unbelievable. Um, I mean, it's I've been here all summer now, pretty much working with, uh, you know, our guys at the rink, all the people that stayed in town. So, I mean, there's a reason that even when it's 110 degrees out, I'm here and not in Michigan. So it's <laughs> it's it's great. I, uh, I don't see myself, you know, moving away unless I unless I really have to. You mentioned Greg Powers having that confidence in you really kind of sold you. But now that you you played for him a couple of years, what are, what do you what kind of jumps out to you about Powers as a leader of a of you know a program with some major aspirations? Yeah, um, it kind of just shows how passionate he is about ASU. I mean, as much as you know, I love ASU and every guy on the team you know loves the school and what this school has done for them. You know, there's no one that loves ASU more than Greg Powers. And I mean, just having that leadership in your locker room every day, I mean, it kind of, it rubs off on guys, you know, you see how much he cares, you see how much he wants to win. And I mean, you just kind of, you don't really have a choice. You have to go out and do the same or else, you know, there's powers is going to bring guys in who will. And yeah, it's just having that leadership is, is crucial to the success this program has had and, you know, the development that this program has had how much of an impact is it to have a you know former goalie himself you know as the head coach it's awesome i mean he gets it you know i feel like that's the it's a you know it's a position that you know you can't really understand it unless you're in the net taking shots you know having that you know pressure on you so having someone that you know has been there it's uh it's 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 nice to have it's nice for someone to, you know, understand at all times. Once you made your way out here to the desert and then you start to, you know, get in the, in the flow of things, you know, what were kind of the, the biggest adjustments that you needed to make or some, some of the biggest differences from the hockey at your prior stops to kind of, you know, high-level college hockey here? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the biggest difference was just, you know, getting used to, you know, men shooting on you, you know, there's a difference between, you know, elite 18 year olds shooting on you and, you know, 22 year old hockey players shooting on you. So just kind of that aspect freshman year was, you know, it took me a while to kind of like catch up to that pace of play. But once I did, I feel like everything else kind of fell in place a little bit at the end of the day, you know, it's still hockey still, you know, stopping shots so i feel like that aspect of it kind of yeah just followed up pretty pretty neatly so your first year here don't, don't see any playing time and obviously in the, today's age in the transfer portal era you know a lot of guys they kind of maybe will cut and run look for opportunities elsewhere but you, you stayed true and obviously things uh panned out uh, in a pretty successful way uh what was the, the, did you ever have, have any thoughts of you know being discouraged maybe and looking elsewhere or just kind of were you kind of sold you know as you mentioned with that confidence that your head coach had in you that you know putting in the work will ultimately blossom one day down the road uh yeah, I, I think, um, no, not really, to be honest. I mean, during the season, you know, obviously there's times, you know, when you're not seeing the ice or whatnot, you know, it, you know, the thought obviously crosses through your mind a little bit. But at the end of the day, like, all I could do while not playing was just, you know, get on the ice every day, skate, get better, 
you know, make my teammates better, do what I can to be a good teammate and a good person. And, uh, that's what I did. And then by the end of the year, you know, powers had that, you know, confidence in me where he, like me and him or him and I both knew that the following year that I would get, you know, a handful of games just because I, you know, earned it. I proved myself, you know, through that whole year. So, I mean, at that point, you know, why think about transferring when, you know, I already developed so much as a player, as a person. I love the school. I love where I am. I love the staff. And, you know, I'm going to get, you know, at least, you know, I think at the time I was thinking I was getting like 10 games at least. So, and I did. So just, uh, yeah, it just worked out. And of course, you know, along the way, getting the practice hero award for the team, you know, just what was it like to just have that validation perhaps as, you know, as additional kind of, you know, uh, proof that, you know, hey, like my, my chance is, is coming soon. Yeah, exactly. And, and especially that, you know, that award was voted on by the players and not the coaches. It wasn't like Powers was, uh, you know, feeding me some award to get me to stay and yeah. uh, kind of show his confidence. You know, that was, uh, it was from the players. So having that, you know, respect in the locker room from the players as well. You know, that was also a big factor. And, you know, I want to stay here. I want to, you know, make this program better. So. And then you ultimately get your chance and put up some sensational numbers. How did it feel just to, you know, be able to, you know, bide your time, put in the work kind of behind the scenes and ultimately when it's your chance to really thrive like that? Yeah, it was just, it was so fun. You know, last year, towards the end of last year, like, just, you know, I thought early on too, we were fighting for that, uh, you know, last like playoff spot, like pairwise spot. So, uh, you know, energy was so high in the locker room. It was just such a fun time to play such a fun, uh, environment and just, you know, everything's better after waiting a year and a half before you get it. Right. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. That last their back half of last year was just, you know, it was amazing, but I'm excited for uh, this year too. What's the environment like in Mullet from a goalie's perspective? You know, obviously you're trying to, you have, you know, uh, intense focus on, on what's going on in front of you, but that's a, you know, obviously a pretty raucous place when it gets, when it gets going. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's hard not to, you know, when I get out there, you know, when I'm the first one skating out of the tunnel, it's just hard not to smile. It's just, you know, so many just diehard fans, so many people that just care so much about this program. And, uh, it's just so fun to see. It's, uh, it's, uh, it makes you appreciate what we have here even more. And, uh, yeah, it makes you want to win. It makes you want to win for the fans. It makes you want to win for, you know, the desert. So being a goalie, one of the cool little added side benefits there, if you will, obviously the you get cool equipment, cool gear, and like you had the uh, the really cool one of the, some of the coolest things I've seen, like the the palm tree pitchfork pads and, and design going. And what was kind of the the genesis of that uh, of that look? Um, it actually uh, there was some inspiration behind uh, one of the world Jun- I think it was the Norwegian World Juniors goalie. He had a some kind of design where there was a like a graphic on the outer roll of his pad and then he had like polar bear like a polar bear on the middle of it i don't know <laughs> but anyways i uh i, I really like the way it looked and uh you know as a goalie you're always kind of looking for ways to you know up your pad game up your helmet yeah. game so yeah once i saw that i knew i wanted to do something like that and uh yeah the ccm guys you know really put it together with what they created so of course looking ahead to you know this season obviously you're making that jump to the nchc as you mentioned you know this is going to be kind of a a gauntlet that uh you know this and you know any program the conference is going to have with the quality of competition uh you know what's kind of the outlook you know are you how much are you looking forward to kind of tackling the the country's best yeah um i think i think the whole team's excited i mean you know, this program has had a lot of success against a lot of really good hockey teams and uh, everyone, you know, a part of the program knows that. So, you know, there's a lot of confidence that we have. Um, I know, uh, I think we're 
voted or like ranked by the media to go like eighth out of ninth in our conference. So then we got that, you know, extra, you know, chip on our shoulder to prove them wrong. So it's just, I, I think it's just an exciting year for, for everyone that's, you know, a part of a part of what we got going on here. And of course, you know, you, you and TJ were kind of the tandem last year. And then this year you and Luke, uh, you know, what's it like just kind of, you know, lessons maybe perhaps working you know, in tandem last year that you're, you think you're able to uh, kind of work forward and obviously, you know, kind of what, what kind of things does uh, Luke to bring when he's uh, out there for you? Yeah. Uh, you know, me and TJ, like we had a great, we had a great little system going on. I mean, we, uh, every time we're out there together, you know, doing our, you know, goalie skates, uh, there's just so much, I think this is like, you know, the key to every, you know, elite goalie tandem is just like, there's so much like just conversation of like, just like learning, you know, there's so much just like learning off each other's games and like seeing what they're doing and how you can implement, you know, whatever, you know, how they're doing to your game. So I think that's something that me and TJ had. And that, you know, is also something that me and Luke have, um, I think Luke, uh, I think, uh, me and Luke might maybe actually might, you know, I think we're, uh, even, you know, even more so kind of in that along that sense of, um, kind of just learning off of each other, maybe just cause he's new this year and, uh, you know, he, uh, he's, you know, an extroverted guy. He loves, you know, just, uh, you know, being in the mix with things. So, uh, yeah, just having like someone to bounce ideas off of, you know, the way that me and Luke do it's, uh, I think it's a recipe for a really great, you know, season to come between the pipes for, you know, whoever's in that, whichever game. So, you know, what kind of things for would ultimately constitute a successful season in your mind? Is it something, you know, a certain win totals advancing in the postseason to a certain degree or something more intangible? You know, what, what, what do you think would be a success for you? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, benchmark one is uh, make the tournament. Um, you know, obviously last year we, I would consider that team successful. We didn't make the tournament, but, uh, you know, this year we kind of don't have, you know, the no conference excuse anymore, you know? So that's kind of everyone's main goal. Um, we have the team to do it. We have the, you know, we have the passion to do it. So I, uh, I think that's kind of everyone's, you know, main criteria for a successful season right now. What do you think that this Sun Devil team can say to the rest of the college hockey world this season, given the opportunities, uh, you know, obviously in the step up and within conference, but just all the opportunities that uh, are before you guys, what do you think the, the ultimate uh, message that this program can send to the rest of the hockey world? Um, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, it's a big thing right now to, we're, uh, considered to be in chapter two right now. You know, we're, uh, we got for the longest time, we were playing out of Oceanside, you know, independent, you know, it's tough to, you know, win national championships in that setting. So right now, you know, you know, we finally got Mullet arena. We finally got a conference to be, to like play for. So, uh, I think that's where, you know, the whole chapter two comes in of like now, you know, now's our time. We're going to, we're going to win. We're going to be a great hockey program. We're going to win national championships. We're going to make frozen fours. So, uh, that's the goal that powers has. That's the goal that the team has. And, uh, yeah, I don't see why that stuff, you know, can't happen with the, just, you know, all the resources that this program has. I'd like to thank Gibson for taking the time to talk with me for this episode. I'd also like to thank Paige Shacklett of ASU Media Relations. Make sure you are subscribed to Speak of the Devils on the podcast platform of your choice for more great sit-down series episodes and full coverage of the 2024 football season on the main show feed. And be sure to follow me on social media at bdenny29. 